sometimes people have an idea that, that the journey to God will be a very sacrificial, you know, like, what have I got to give up for Lent? You know, we've had memories of giving up, giving up, giving up. It's going to cost me. I'm going to have to pay a price. I'm not going to have any fun. You know, I'm going to be like, like a priest or a nun, and it's just not going to be fun at all. That has not been my experience. I have to tell you, for the last 25 years since I've worked with the Course, I've had a lot of fun. And, and it just gets stronger and stronger. It's very playful, it's very joyful, it's not limited in any way, so you know, you, can, you find yourself meeting people. I, I shared a parable one time. I was uh, in Utah, and I love music. That's the way I really got into spirituality. Kind of like Ken Wapnick got in through the music, and so did I. And I love music so much that the Spirit would speak to me for decades through music. That's where I got my messages, mostly before I got into studying metaphysics in the Course. And one time I was in Utah, and a friend of mine said, Well, I'm good friends with the man who invented Dolby. Uh, the inventor of Dolby. And I thought, wow, Dolby, that's all, all movie theaters. I mean, it's just a mess of his invention that's been used by humankind in a major way, Dolby Stereo. And she said, yeah, he lives, uh, he lives right here in, in Heber City. I said, Heber City, Utah, you know, right here? And he, he's retired, he lives there with his wife. So she said, yeah, I'll take, take you to meet him. So I go there, beautiful, he's got his hair, he's got these big like lamb chop sideburns, you know, from like back in the 70s. And, and I go in their house and then he takes me through the house and it's almost like going through the Smithsonian Institute of Sound because he's won so many awards just walking through the corridors there's just so many awards everywhere it's just I've never seen so many music awards and then he takes me down to where he does all his inventing and he shows me the schematics of the latest project he's working on and this is highly technical I mean He's getting all these electronic schematics as downloads from the Holy Spirit. Like Mozart would take down music, entire concertos, he'd get the whole concerto in like one instant, and then he'd have to scurry to write the whole thing out, because it was such a huge download. It shows you the power of the miracle. So he's talking to me about this, he's showing me all the schematics, telling me about his new projects, and then he said, come on, I've built in my basement the ultimate sound room. So the inventor of Dolby's built the ultimate sound room. We go down there, and I mean, there's the speakers all over the wall. And he takes me by the hand, and he says, come on, he takes me by the shoulders. He said, come on, I'm going to put you in the sweet spot. So I'm, on the, I'm in the ultimate sound room on earth. Well, the inventor of Dolby, and he's got me by the shoulders, and he's put me down in one specific chair that he says is in the sweet spot. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay. He goes back, my friend AC, uh, Carol, is, sits in right next to me, right next to the sweet spot, and he starts cranking up the music, and he's playing like Enya, and he's playing like uh, that, that song, um, uh, what's the one, it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful song about, um, uh, it, about the illusions, and it's like all oh, really deep songs. Like this guy's into all these deep metaphysical songs, glorious songs. And then, as Clouds. he keeps, he, uh, Clouds. it was, oh, it was that one, You Can Relax Now. Susan McCollum, a number, number of artists, he plays You Can Relax Now. And I'm in the sweet spot. <laughs> so it's like the whole room starts to go on me and everything, and he just plays one song after another after another. Uh, in fact, AC is like, woo, she's whooping, it sounds like she's having an <laughs> orgasm or something. Uh, she's next to the sweet spot and she's, ah, 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 ah. Right? So there was a lot of happy sounds coming there. And, and so the, and then, just when I'm kind of totally blissed out, he, this, this, the curtains open and it's a, it's a, it's a movie theater. And it's, uh, it's um, Sarah Brightman and who's the one from... Uh, it sings with her Bocelli. Bocelli. It's Sarah Brightman and, and Bocelli, I mean Bocelli, down somewhere maybe in South America at nighttime in some, it's some film concert. And so now there's all the visuals of those two voices, those two voices 
with all the colors and the nighttime and everyone's just, it's the presence of God is just so strong. And I mean, I was just absolutely transported. Now that's what I mean by the use of symbols. When you give your life over to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus, that's where I found myself. And it was absolutely, absolutely the most transporting kind of experience using sound and, and visuals as well. It was using images and sounds to just take you way, 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 way up. And that's what we're all entitled. We are entitled to miracles. We are entitled to let the Spirit use the symbols in a way where we surrender the control of them. And it just takes us into higher and higher states of mind. And then I've had three revelatory experiences where the veil of the world completely disappeared and I went into what is called the Great Rays. Or it's called Revelation actually at the beginning of the, of the text. And that was just a total non-perceptual experience. It was just blazing light, almost like the whole screen of the world just burned away. You know, like when you're in a movie theater and the, the film, the old film used to burn and then the whole screen would just go into blazing light and the images would be gone. That's kind of a, a, a metaphor. Mm. So that's why we do this. That's why we're having these miracles just so we can be taken into a state of revelation. Or you might say revelation readiness because he does say in the Course, <laughs> revelation won't come into your experience if you're too afraid of it. He says you have to wait, you have to have miracles to prepare the way so that revelation is more beatific than traumatic. You see, the, the use of beatific than traumatic. He doesn't want us to scare ourselves and freak out. He doesn't want us to be hurled. He says, you won't be hurled into heaven. So that's what this is about. It's, it's really what we're going for here.